the Ponzi scheme is over. Star Citizen is now owned by a bank. Let's run around and pull out our hair after we sit on fire. Which is why I probably keep my hair short so I can't pull it out. When I hear the stupidity that comes out of some of these Star Citizen skeptics' mouths, what are they thinking? Well... These were the ridiculous comments being made around social media when it was announced that Star Citizen's UK office, Foundry42, had taken out a loan for an undisclosed amount. In the UK, private companies need to make filings, which are available to the public. One of the recent filings was that of a loan. This immediately blew up in Reddit and other social media as the brightest of the Star Citizen skeptics, who, to my surprise, happen to be forensic accountants in their spare time. I know, crazy, right? <laughs> they all jumped on this news and declared that the end is near for Star Citizen. That's it. It's over. Guys, we all lost our money. We've been scammed. I know. Well, let's take a deeper dive into exactly what this loan was about. I am Montoya, and this is episode one of my new show, The Meta Game. Welcome back, we have a lot of great stuff to get through, so let's get started. But before I do, let me first give thanks to my Patreon backers, without whom none of this would be possible. Thank you for your continuing support, I look forward to doing more of these shows for you all. Alright, Foundry42 says I took a loan, people freak out. Ortwin posts an official response. It is rare to hear from Ortwin, he's usually not on the front lines, but he is... Ortrin Fryamut, uh, co-founder, vice chairman, and general counsel. The general counsel. That means he is the main lawyer who gives advice to CIG. So, to understand what's happening here, first, let's talk about the UK government gaming tax credit. What this does is it allows gaming companies like CIG's UK branch to claim up to 25% of the game's production costs. The UK does this to attract and retain high-tech companies and provide jobs, obviously. The gaming tax credit is payable in September of each year. So it's coming up pretty soon anyway. Now, Foundry42 could just sit and wait until September and get the money then. Or they can get the money right now. Now, we don't know the exact amount. Let's say it's £100,000. But what can Foundry42 do with £100,000 right now? Well, they can buy some machines, some computers or servers, something they needed to help production to speed up the game, or they can hire extra staff. Do they need extra staff? Absolutely. Check the page right there. I can see lots of staff openings. These people need salaries. The money can be used for that. I know you're also thinking, but Montoya, if they already have money, why do they need the loan at all? Great question, and the answer comes directly from Ortwin himself, who said in his post, Doing it this way will allow CIG to avoid converting unnecessarily other currencies into British pounds. Now, CIG makes the bulk of its money, I'll probably say maybe all of its money, goes to the states in US dollars. They then take the US dollars and then funnel it to the offices in the UK and Europe. This requires that US dollars be converted into British pounds. Now, there are two costs here, probably. I don't deal in these kind of amounts. Uh, I'm not that well off. But <laughs> there's a, a transaction fee. Uh, anytime you go to the bank and you convert money, the bank charges you a higher rate as their commission for facilitating the transaction. So if right now British pounds are selling for 0.76, they'll charge you 0.79 or 0.80, and they'll make a profit off that difference. I'll explain it soon in a chart. The other charge, obviously, is uh, the transaction fee itself, transferring money from one bank to another. So this is actually a great opportunity to learn about foreign exchange rates, or Forex, as we call it in the industry. And to do this, let's look at a chart of the USD GBP. Now, don't get glossed over here. I can see you looking at it. Grab a pen and pencil. This is going to be very educational. What is the USD GBP? Well, as you can guess, USD is US dollars. That is called the base currency because it's on the left of that. GBP is the British pound. What this means is the base currency, let's say, is one. Well, it is one. And GBP is the quote currency. And so look at this chart down here. Now, you see this big spike up here? This is Brexit. Not important, but... Let's take a point over here. July 2016. The US dollar, one US dollar, was worth 0.69 British pounds. So, if you had 100 US dollars 
and you went to the bank and said, convert this into pounds, they would have given you 69 British pounds. Well, exchange rates would be different at the bank. They have to make profits, but roughly that's what it is. So take a look at this chart. Now, this is what Ortwin's getting at when he's talking about currency fluctuations. When the chart is going this direction, this is great because if CIG sends over a million US to the, to the UK office, uh, at this point over here, they would be getting 770,000 pounds. If they sent over a million US dollars over in January of this year, they would get 820,000 pounds. That's great. But what happens when the chart goes the other direction? Now, this is where the fluctuations don't work in your favor. What happens if we go this way? If CIG sent over a million US dollars back in March, they would get 820,000 pounds. Nice. But if they had to do it Friday, markets are closed right now, by the way, but if they had to do it on Friday, they would get 760,000 pounds. That is a massive difference. That is almost 100,000 pounds difference. What can you do with 100,000 pounds? There's a lot they could have done. So in order to avoid this, in order to keep currency fluctuations out the pitch completely, their financial advisor said, hey, let's simply take a forward on our tax rebate and simply pay that back when it comes. Makes perfect financial sense. But the other part of the question is, why do they need money at all if they have so much money to begin with? Well, that's easy enough to answer too. Uh, let's use an example, Apple, which is the most cash-rich company in the world. Back in 2015, Apple had $178 billion in cash. Even though they had this massive, massive cash hoard, they still issued $68 billion in bonds. When a company issues bonds, it's like taking a loan. They say, we'll give you $68 billion and we'll promise to pay you back with interest. So the bottom line with this is a company will take a loan because not because they need the money, but because the opportunity cost of raising cash in the case of Apple from a bond offering was more advantageous than using part of their own 178 billion war chest. Same with CIG. It was more advantageous to simply get the British pounds from a bank now and pay it back later. Simple as that. I hope this clears up the matter. If you have any further questions or comments, please post below. If you have anything more to add about the British gaming tax rebate, feel free to educate us in the comment section. Also, don't forget to share this video with your fellow star citizens. Like, subscribe, you know the drill. Thank you for joining me. Watch out for the next show. I'm going to start talking about some very juicy topics concerning organizations within Star Citizen. I am Montoya. This is The Metagame.